I don't know what's wrong with my computer. It's just gone to hell today. Oh, oh well. Yeah. Well, if we ever get on the radio with this thing, we'll be in. You'll be in for perfect shape. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm trying to get. I have, some... a good, I have the perfect face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so I'm going to start screen sharing again. And uh, how do you say the the Hebrew words for C? How does that go again, Gary? It's Re'e. Re'e, wonderful. Re so this and is... it's like the, it's the it's the command to see in the same way that Shema is the command to hear. Ah, wow! Oh, that's neat. That's like a bookend, right? Re'e Re oh, meta... in Shema. Sure. See, this day I set before you blessing and curse. Blessing if you obey the commandments of the eternal your God that I enjoin upon you this day. And curse if you do not obey the commandments of the eternal your God, but turn away from the path that I enjoin upon you this day and follow other gods whom you have not experienced. When the eternal your God brings you into the land that you are about to enter and possess, you shall pronounce the blessing at Mount Gerizim and the curse at Mount Ebal. Both are on the other side of the Jordan. That's me. No, the other side of the Jordan, beyond the west road that is in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the Arabah, near Gilgal, by the terebinths of Morah. That's fascinating. Shall I keep writing, reading? Yes, please. Yes, for you are about to cross the Jordan to enter and possess the land that the Eternal, your God, is assigning to you. When you have occupied it and are settled in it, take care to observe all the laws and rules that I have set before you this day. That's wow, that's, reading. yeah, Heavy that's stuff. terrific. This is bless, the blessing and the curse. That's uh, good to remember. Bl a blessing and a curse. My goodness, this is, it's already starting off with a bang, right? Boom. Um, and it, so these are important words, and I think there's going to be some repetition because we've heard some of these things before, but I think it's really great we're, uh, we're starting with this. Uh, they are talking about my wife, are they, Mike? <laughs> I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. I'm That's sorry. our Jordan. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. That's all right. Okay. Annie, you want to pick it up at chapter sure. 12? These are the laws and rules that you must carefully observe in the land that the eternal God of your ancestors is giving you to possess as long as you live on earth. You must destroy all the sites at which the nations you are to dispossess worship their gods, whether on lofty mountains or on hills or under any luxuriant tree. Tear down their altars, smash their pillars, put their sacred posts to the fire, and cut down the images of their gods, obliterating their name from that site. Do not worship the eternal your God in like manner, but look only to the site that the eternal your God will choose amidst all your tribes as God's habitation to establish the divine name there. There you are to go, and there you are to bring your burnt offerings and other sacrifices, your tithes and contributions, your votive and free will offerings, and the firstlings of your herds and flocks. Together with your household, you shall feast there before the eternal your God, happy in all the undertakings in which you, the eternal your God, has blessed you. You shall not act at all as we now act here, each householder as he pleases, because you have not yet come to the allotted haven that the eternal your God is giving you. When you cross the Jordan and settle in the land that the eternal your God is allotting to you, and God grants you safety from all your enemies around you, and you live in security, then you must bring everything that I command you to the site where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name, your burnt offerings and other sacrifices, your tithes and contributions, 
and all the choice votive offerings that you bow to the eternal. And you shall rejoice before the eternal your God with your sons and daughters and with your male and female slaves, along with the family of the Levite in your settlements, for he has no territorial allotment among you. Wow, that's great stuff. And when I when I hear these words, the, the, the big word I can I'm thinking of when I see all these words and how the, how important it is, is uh, is relationship. That's the word that I'm thinking of when I when I'm reading this word. It's all about relationship with God in my mind and how important it is once the Israelites move into the promised land to keep that relationship with God. And you can see over and over that these you know if there's ever anything that separates the Hebrew people from God, it's got to be obliterated. It's like, it's, it can be heavy, as, as we know. Cynthia loves to point it out. <laughs> what, what, what else is everyone thinking about this? It's amazing. I'm thinking about you shall rejoice. Nice. What, is people, what do you all think about being commanded to feel an emotion? How does that work? Well, you can't. The Torah doesn't really command you to... God doesn't command you specifically your emotion but you're commanded to engage in certain activities that kind of result in you being joyous. So if you engage in certain activities, in other words, you can't command, you can't just say you have to be rejoiced, but by engaging in certain activities, like we do when we get together, we study, we celebrate Shabbat, we engage in those activities, so we rejoice. Also, I... <laughs> I'm interested in is it says um, then you must bring everything that I command you to the site where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name. What is the divine name? I'm interested in that. Hmm. Sounds like God just advising us to go to where God will establish God's name. God I will say this is the place, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The thing that I thought was kind of interesting was up higher in the prayer mm-hmm. when they said, get rid of all the uh, all the bad um, memories from the idol worshippers of the past. And here I'm thinking of uh, today, they're pulling down um, uh, George Washington and uh, other uh, great heroes of the world and the uh, monuments that are being de- destroyed, those memories and those things that was up a little higher, I think, where they talked about uh, get rid of... Tear down their altars. Down the altars. Yeah, smash, smash their, their pillow. pillow. With the yep. sacred, cut down the images, obliterating their name from the site. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. yeah, it was pretty... It, modern, modern connection there to me. That's a really good connection because it's it seems to it seems to sort of coincide a lot because it's like one per, like especially when you talk about Confederate soldiers it's like one person's hero is another person's oppressor right so it's like and that's it's so good that God has those rules like don't put up these monuments you know <laughs> then we don't have to tear them down after a hundred or two hundred years <laughs> as we keep going through our cycles of this guy's the best guy this woman's the best woman who knows who cares right and remember what bill russell said when they built the statue of him and it was the sager family that was involved in that bill russell said all the birds you have a statue is the birds just you know all over it <laughs> Aww. that's good okay Take care not to sacrifice your burnt offerings in any place like you like, but only in the place that the Eternal will choose in one of your tribal territories. There you shall sacrifice your burnt offerings, and there you shall observe all that I enjoin upon you. But whenever you desire, you may slaughter and eat meat in any of your settlements, according to the blessing that the Eternal your God has granted you. The impure and the pure alike may partake of it. That's interesting. As of the gazelle and the deer, but you must not partake of it. You'll pour it out on the ground like water. You may n- not partake in your <coughs> eyes of your new green minor oil of the firstlings of your herds and flock, or of any of the votive offerings that you vow, or of your free will offerings or of your contributions. I didn't know there was a free will offering. These you must consume before the eternal your God in the place that the eternal your God will choose. You and your sons and your daughters, your male and female slaves, and the family of the Levite in your settlements. 
happy before the eternal your God in all your undertakings. Be sure not to neglect the family of the Levite as long as you live in your land. When the eternal enlarges your territory as promised and you say, I shall eat some meat, for you have the urge to eat meat, you may eat meat whenever you wish. If the place where the eternal has chosen to establish the divine name is too far from you, you may slaughter any of the cattle or sheep that the eternal gives you, as I've instructed you, and you may eat to your heart's content in your settlements. Eat it, however, as the gazelle and the deer are eaten, the impure may eat it together with the pure. But make sure that you do not partake of the blood, for the blood is the life, and you must not consume the life with the flesh. You must not partake of it, you must, you must not partake of it in order that it may go well with you the sentence to come. For you will be doing what is right in the sight of the eternal. <clears throat> okay, 26, right? Yes, I believe that's where we are. But such sacred and votive donations as you may have tish, as you may have shall be taken by you to the site that the eternal will choose. You shall offer your burnt offerings, both the flesh and the blood, on the altar of the eternal your God, and of your other sacrifices. The blood shall be poured out on the altar of the eternal your God, and you shall eat the flesh. Be careful to heed all these commandments that I enjoin upon you. Thus it will go well with you and with your descendants after you forever. For you will be doing what is good and right in the sight of the eternal your God. When the eternal your God has cut down before you the nations that you are about to enter and dispossess, and you have dispossessed them and settled in their land, beware of being lured into their ways after they have been wiped out before you. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how did those nations worship their gods? I, too, will follow these practices. You shall not act thus toward the eternal your God, for they perform for their gods every abhorrent act that the eternal detests. They even offer up their sons and daughters in fire to their gods. Be careful to observe only that which I enjoin upon you. Neither add to it nor take away from it. Well, that's against human sacrifice, right? Mm. That's the way I read it, too. I mean, I, that's that's I mean, because we've always heard this over and over before this portion of the Torah that, you know, they that the people who were worshiping several gods were doing things that weren't very nice. And I think this is when we have it in full color of what they were doing. And um, in my experience, in my uh, belief, it's one of the things that God just despises if people offer their sons and daughters um, in fire. I mean, that must just be, that's the, I mean, that's, the, I mean, I don't even want to go into it too much, but it's, it just, uh, because it, it's talked about so often, but this is the first time we see that this is what they're doing. Um, and I think that's important for us to keep in mind because well, God, the whole reason that we were given the Torah, like, and God gave, you know, the whole idea was to do away with all of these activities. We were supposed to establish, you know, um, and especially in this Pasha, you know, see, I set before you blessing and curse. You know, if you follow the commandments, it's blessing. If you don't, we have the choice. Um... And it's used in the present, so it's not like, you know, I have set before you, I set before you, because it's continual, it's now. Um, and it's our choice, whatever we choose to do. But the whole idea is that following the commandments, is, is the idea is to obliterate all of these kinds of behavior, like you say, that are the people that worshipped all these other, you know, pagan gods and stuff. If there appears among you a prophet or a dream diviner who gives you a sign or a portent saying, let us follow and worship another God whom you have not experienced. Even if this sign or portent name to you comes true, do not heed the words of that prophet or that, or that dream diviner. For the eternal your God is testing you to see whether you really love the eternal your God with all your heart and soul. It is, it is the eternal your God alone whom you should follow whom you should revere, whose commandments you should observe, whose orders you should heed, whom you should worship, and to whom you should hold fast. As for that prophet or dream diviner, such as one shall be put to death for having urged disloyalty to the eternal your God, 
who freed you from the land of Egypt and who redeemed you from the house of bondage to make you stray from the path that the eternal your God commanded you to follow. Thus, you will sweep out evil from your midst. If your brother, your own mother's son, okay. or your son or daughter, or the wife of your balsam, or, or, or your closest friend entices you in secret, saying, come, let us worship other gods, whom neither you nor your ancestors have experienced, from among the gods of the people around you, either near to you or distant, anywhere from one end of the earth to, to, the, other. to the other, do not ascend or give heed to any of them. Show no pity or compassion, and do not cover up the matter, but take that person's life. Let your hand be the first to put that person to death, followed by the hand of the rest of the people. Stone that person to death for having sought to make you stray from, uh, from the eternal your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thus all Israel will hear and be afraid, and such evil things will not be done again in your midst. Wow. Oh, my goodness. We can pause right there. Yes. <laughs> Whoa. Yay. So um, one of the things I don't well, go, does anyone have any comments right now? I mean, this is uh, it's pretty heavy duty. Yeah, I think it's I think it's more metaphorical. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of this stuff, you know, like did Rabbi Kunin like pointed out like when we read all of these things, we don't have any record of how they were ever followed yeah. or how these things were done. And it's just like if you, you know, you tell your kid, you get home late, I'm going to kill you. I will kill you. <laughs> and usually you don't mean that, you know. Right. But, you know, you have to put something out there as a deterrent, you know. Right. And some of these things, the way I take it, to me, you know, it just seems like it, you know, it sounds scary and it's supposed to be. Right. But that the whole idea is that it's supposed to scare you into following it. <laughs> That's right. That's the way I look at it. I'm I'm totally with you because it's it's not so much that we should. It's almost like we can almost internalize it. I think this is where you're. Maybe this is where you were going with it. It's like you can kill those desires to you know to worship anything but God, right? It's like yeah. yep. Um, and it is yeah, going to be real powerful. It can't just say, you know, it can't say it in a nice, soft, easy way. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, it's it would okay be nice if you if, do, if you don't. Yeah, whatever. it would be good if you could follow my <laughs> commandments. It would be all right. But no, it's got to be something that's, you know, really hard cause and effect. If you don't walk off the ledge of the building, you crash. You crash, yeah. And that's, it's supposed to be something that's supposed to scare the daylights out of you. It's, it's. <laughs> Yeah, and it and it all through the Torah, all through the Bible, the biggest commandment, and I say it all the time, is to worship God. It's nothing but to worship God. It's the biggest commandment, you know. Should, don't come, let us worship other gods. How many? How many times? This is the fifth book of Torah, and that is continually throughout every book. It's so important. And and nowadays, I think a lot of modern the modern world wants to turn away and just oh yeah we're fine we're on vacation blah 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 and i'm i'm not saying that you know i don't think we need to stone anybody <laughs> but i mean we should at least stone those impulses in ourselves not to follow you know i think anyway Eric, there you go um what do you think ruthie i see you laughing I, 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 I I'm, I'm one of those that's such a rebellion that I, I, I don't want to follow anything when people say you have to do, have to do that. <laughs> well, of course, right now. I'm a very rebellious person. So. <laughs> Me too, that's, but against people, not God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't say, oh, do whatever you please, of course. I understand it. You have to have some type of God. Yes. It's I over. think. Yeah. There's also like uh, uh, um, not to be tempted, but like not to to you know that there is evil out there, and there is like people that are going to try and you know help you um, find those lesser impulses in yourself and follow them along. And um, you know, I, I don't I don't think I would ever um, think that. I, I think you have to own your own stuff. So if you make that choice, that's yours. 
but I think that there, I think that there is some acknowledgement that there's evil as well, that there are, you know, people that that's, that's their joy in life is to, to, um, try and pull people off of the path that they're, that they're on, make them go the wrong way. Mm. Man is capable of both evil and good. We're, we're, yeah, because yeah, the part is about the curse and the blessing and the curse. You know, it's it, there is the choice there. There's both. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And I was also thinking when Ruthie was speaking about what happened in Seattle not that long ago when these protesters thought it was a great idea not to have police and not to have any rules and not to have anything. And then very quickly, everything went to chaos and somebody needed help and they couldn't get help. And it was a disaster. And they even called it something, um, some kind of nihilistic. It was just, I forget exactly what, but I mean, this happens. This happens. We need rules. We need, and that's so important to follow. I mean, right. all of the, the good things here, you know, <laughs> to, to be able to connect and to be able to structure organization and everything else and to have God as the, that king, you know, it's woo, so big. Hallelujah. Uh, does anyone else like to read? Uh, if you hear it said of one of the towns that the eternal your God has given you to dwell in, that some scoundrels from among you have gone and subverted the inhabitants of their town, saying, Come, let us worship other gods whom you have not experienced, you shall investigate and inquire and interrogate thoroughly. If it is true, the fact is established, that abhorrent thing was perpetrated in your midst. Put the inhabitants of that town to the sword and put its cattle to the sword. Doom it and all that is in it to destruction. Gather all its spoil into the open square and burn the town and all of its spoil as a holocaust to the eternal your God. And it shall... And it shall remain an everlasting ruin never to be rebuilt. Let nothing that has been doomed stick to your hand in order that the Eternal may turn from a blazing anger and show you compassion, and in compassion increase you as promised on oath to your fathers. For you will be heeding the Eternal, your God, obeying all the divine commandments that I enjoin upon you this day, doing what is right in the eye in the sight of the Eternal, your God. You are children of the Eternal, your God. You shall not gashed yourselves or shaved the front of your heads because of the dead. For you are a people consecrated to the eternal, your God. The eternal, your God, shows you from among all other peoples on earth to be a treasured people. You shall not eat anything abhorrent. These are the animals that you may eat, the ox, the sheep and the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roebuck, the wild goat, the ibex and the antelope the mountain sheep, and any other animal that has true hooves which are cleft in two and brings up the cud, such you may eat. But the following which do not bring up the cud or have true hooves which are cleft through, you may not eat. The camel, the hare, and the damon. For although they bring in the cud, they have, they have no true hooves. They are impure for you. Also the swine, for although it has true hooves, and tasty bacon. It does not bring up the cud. It is impure for you. You shall not eat of their flesh or touch their carcasses. I don't remember ever touching a pig's carcass. Uh, well, isn't it one in the, in the store? <laughs> yeah, I suppose if you're eating bacon or something. Okay. These you may eat of all that live in water. You may eat anything that has fins and scales. But you may not eat anything that has no fins and scales. It is impure for you. You may eat any pure bird. The following you may not eat. The eagle, the vulture, and the black vulture. The kite, the falcon, and the buzzard of any variety. Every variety of raven, the ostrich, the nighthawk, the seagull, and the hawk of any variety. The little owl, the great owl, and the white owl. The oh. pelican, the bustard, and the comorant, the stork, any variety of heron, the hope, and the bat. Now, see, now we realize that the bats aren't really birds, but back then... Oh, wait a minute. They said you can eat the bat? 
No, you can't. You can't. You can't. Oh, no, but I'm saying like here they put they talk about birds that you can't eat. Yeah. What did you like owls or something, Ruthie? I heard you. Mm. But for a minute they told us we could eat them, and I didn't know we couldn't eat seagulls either. I wonder why. Yeah, you well, like they're seagulls? kind of scavengers. scavengers. Yeah, oh, the scavengers. That's what. Mm. And and also oh, yeah. owls. I, I'll let you know this that um, they do carry some disease. And there was a, and I, the only reason why I know this is because when we, when you work in TV news, you know a lot of different stuff about a bunch of different stuff. And one, one of the things was uh, there was a, a class and I forgot where it was. Uh, it was like a high school class that was dissecting owls and they all came down with this disease that was only prevalent in owls. So oh. when I see this in Torah, it reminds me of these things that are in real life, an issue, you know, right. <laughs> you know, so I always get like, Ooh, this is, this is important stuff. You know, this is really yeah, and in the general the sense for health reasons. Yeah. That's yeah. A, it's very healthy. Saying, yeah. Too. The health reasons. Yeah. And to be aware of what you put into yourself. You are what you eat. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, but you can't even eat purple onions now. So. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Jordan, I'm sure you got a joke in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, no, I was just thinking of uh, the uh, the fish uh, when they were talking about uh, the catching fish and things like that. It reminded me that that famous line: "If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but if you teach a man to fish, he'll drink beer and go fishing the rest." Of the day. <laughs> <laughs> he, did he did it again. <laughs> we're still over here. <laughs> That's beautiful. 19, yep. all the winged swarming things are impure for you. <clears throat> they may not be eaten. You may eat only pure winged creatures. You shall not eat anything that has died a natural death. Give it to the stranger in your community to eat, or you may sell it to a foreigner. For you are a people consecrated to the eternal your God. You shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. You shall set aside every year a tenth part of the field of the yield of your sowing that is brought from your f the field. Yeah, Israel does that all the time. You know, Israel does that. Yeah. The the 10th part? Yeah, the yeah, the, there's like um a, 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 it's it's not, I'm sorry. I'm getting it confused with the uh 7th year that they take a break. Oh, yeah, that's coming up. That's coming up. Yeah. Definitely. But you're always supposed to leave the edges of your field for the poor and the that's Right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I think that does that come up too. I think it does come up in a little bit. You shall if consume you the tithes of your new grain and wine and oil and the firstlings of your herds and flocks. Uh, also, we, so this is kind of talking about the tithes, right? Which uh, which is kind of something that the Christians talk about too. They talk about giving a ten percent of your oh, yeah. Oh, salary. Tithe. Yeah, that's the tithe. Does that happen in Judaism too? Oh does, yeah. Talk, ten percent is about. Yeah, some people do more than 10%, but I'm saying this, the minimum is 10%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you shall consume the tithes of your new grain and wine and oil and the firstlings of your herds and flocks in the presence of the eternal, your God, in the place where God will choose to establish the divine name. Here's the divine name again, Ruth. So yeah. that you may, you may learn to revere the eternal, your God forever. Oh, now I get it. I just got it. When he keeps know how we say when we pray i think that's what he means that like his divine name is only like we only know it if for ourselves you understand uh, so we don't, yeah we don't say it just you know it's it just kind of any any time you don't you don't say that you say it only when you pray so you never say adonai when you're not right and, uh, and, and so that you may learn to revere the eternal your God forever. Should the distance be too great for you, should you be unable to pr transport them because the place where the eternal your God has chosen to establish the divine name is far from you and because the eternal your God has blessed you, you may convert them into money. Wrap up the money and take it with you to the place that the eternal your God has chosen and spend the money on anything you want cattle, sheep, wine, or other intoxicant, <laughs> or oh. anything you may desire. <laughs> okay, Cynthia, what do you got? <laughs> I'm digesting that. <laughs> Any other intoxicant? It could be 
Green leaves. It could be <laughs> could be from Mexico, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> hey man, you know? it's all kosher, right? Any plant is kosher, right? <laughs> it could be CBD. Yo, CBD. <laughs> you know, God doesn't talk. The Torah doesn't talk about unkosher plants, does it? It tells you what animals you can eat and can't eat. It doesn't really. Uh, I mean, except that, for the tree of knowledge, but. Does anyone want to pick it up? Uh, oh, and let me just finish up. And, and you shall feast there in the presence of your eternal God and rejoice with your household. There again is the word rejoice that, that we saw. Yay. Yay. Oh, okay. So does anyone want to start at 27? Cynthia? Before I start and I'll go on again. Okay, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. But do not neglect the family of the Levite in your community, for he has no hereditary portion as you have. Every third year, you shall bring out the full tithe of your yield of that year, but leave it within your settlements. Then the family of the Levite, who has no hereditary portion as you have, and the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow in your settlements shall come and eat their fill, so that the eternal, your God, may bless you in all the enterprises you undertake. That's so nice. That's so really a nice idea. Mm -hmm. That's Just when we, we shared like that, wouldn't it be a great world? That's wonderful. Really, it is very nice. Yes. Well, this is what looks to me like it's talking about favoring the Levite. <laughs> and that's not everybody, but uh, that's still a nice idea to yeah. help everybody to get some portion. Absolutely. Every that's because the Levites, the Levites don't have anything. They just take care of the tabernacle. Right. The Levites were the only tribe that didn't really have any farmland, correct? They, right. they were established throughout right. Israel without farms. Yeah, they're, 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 they just took care of the tabernacle. And, yeah. Oh, so I didn't realize that. That makes a lot more sense then. Yeah. yeah. I thought they were a chosen group, but in any event. All right. So I will read every seventh year, you shall practice remission of debts. Huh. Yari and I do that. Uh, well, this shall to, be the nature. Good stuff, though. This shall be the no nature of the, This shall be the nature of the remission. All creditors shall remit the due that they claim from their fellow Israelites. They shall not done their fellow Israelites or kin, for the remission proclaimed is of the eternal. You may dun the foreigner, but you must remit whatever is due from your kin. Sounds like the governor says you don't have to pay your rent anymore. And you should be, uh, and the landlords should all be happy about it yet. It's <laughs> unbelievable what's going on in this world. Anyhow, uh, there shall be no needy among you, since the eternal your God will bless you in the land that the eternal your God is giving you as a hereditary portion. If only you heed the eternal your God and take care to keep all this instruction that I enjoin upon you this day, for the eternal your God will bless you. As promised, you will extend loans to many nations, but require none yourself. What a deal. You will dominate many nations, but they will not dominate you. My goodness, that's quite a bit. That fell in the right place for Gary and me to read about creditors than that till happens. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's uh I mean what you know you you mentioned something Jordan too it's like right now is like it's such a crazy time people are getting you know no um, no rent moratoriums on everything yeah. bills paying evictions and this is something that I always bring up because this is part of another Torah portion that usually comes up in May isn't it Gary is it Leviticus, it's it's very similar to it's the um, it's the jubilee year and how you forgive debts and stuff. Remember and that Shemitah. I think yeah. I think Shemitah. I think it's in Numbers. Numbers, right? Something. I like think that. it's in Numbers. I don't. I'm not sure if it's in Leviticus or Numbers. I forgot. But I always say like, why don't we try something like this? We always try. We always have. We have this huge economy, right? Because our economy is you know okay. It's vast. It's great. It's the biggest colossal thing that people have ever known this economy and it's great, but it always crashes. 
That's the one thing I know about the economy. It will crash. <laughs> It'll crash. And then when it builds itself up again, it's going to crash again. Right. <laughs> so, yep. so it's almost like right here in the, in these words, we got it built in. We got a built in crash every seven years or so. Okay. All debts forgiven. Start off fresh zero. Annie, go ahead. Go for it. You, you were about to. Oh, I didn't have anything to say. I was just agreeing with you that, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> You know, I have people uh, that I uh, communicate with a lot in the law business who say, as soon as all these moratoriums are lifted, all of the uh, lenders in the world are going to start foreclosing. And all these people who haven't paid their mortgages, mm -hmm. all the landlords are going to start evicting people who haven't paid their rent. And like okay. you just said, Michael, the crash is on its way. But I'm not so sure because, uh, well, with this president in any event, he'll just manufacture another couple of trillion and send it out to everybody so they won't have to ever pay their bills. But I don't know. It's got to end sometime, like you said. Yeah. And plus, we're going to be paying those bills, too. It's yeah, uh, free money. Right? Yeah. I have a whole different take on this, okay? I really feel that if we really were fair with everybody and there was less greed, we wouldn't have the crashing. I think that there's so much greed that this is an interesting time in our lives to look at how we can share more. And like you see how people are giving more with food for people and stuff that don't have you know, money. Some people are not getting unemployment. Some people. So I, I see this as a time for re reflection of how we can be far more fair with people, because I think that there's been a lot of greed in the higher ups and that the people that are really working hard we're getting screwed. So I don't know. I, I look at it in a different way. That's just me. I hope you're right. Yeah. Hope no. so. I do feel bad for the landlords, Jordan. I agree with you. The landlords are getting screwed right. I do feel bad for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the, the tenants, unfortunately, are uh, sometimes able to pay their rent, but because the governor says you don't have to and you can't be evicted, some yeah. tenants are taking advantage. But I think I see both yeah. sides. Yeah, that's I agree. I think that's where they're being greedy. I agree with you. I agree with you. Right. But then you right. also see people losing what they work for all their lives and then they get into right. depression and drugs, suicide. Yeah, right. suicide is an all time high now. It's all yeah. 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 Just thinking it's the it's difficult on both sides of the equations, no matter which side you're looking at on a lot of these different issues. Like um a lot of people need um, the unemployment extensions, but the people that are working that have low paying jobs are really having trouble, even though they're still working, paying their bills too. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know what I mean? And they're making but less if, money than the people that are. Right. That's true. But no, if no. we had people like Ruthie said, if we had people that weren't greedy, like if you didn't need to be on unemployment and you didn't need the extra 600, Right. And you wouldn't be if you didn't need, you know, to to not pay your rent like I'm paying my rent, you know, I'm paying my mortgage, I'm paying my right. bills because I'm still working. So there's no reason, even though I don't have to, I know they can't throw me out of there or whatever, right. Right. but I'm not going to not pay my bills just because I would like to keep the money myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if we're if we all do the right thing. There's plenty for everybody. I think we just absolutely agree. <laughs> but that'll never happen. No. In the real world. But may, maybe people, maybe there's more people that are actually thinking it might actually happen and people communicating and talking about some of these things about how there are two sides to every issue and that, you know, there aren't. Th there are things that we can do that make sense for both sides instead of always yeah. making it Annie, a, fight, actually, a big fight. Annie, there's, there's actually four sides to every yeah. story lawyers say. There's my <laughs> side, there's your side, there's the truth, and who the judge or, judge or the jury believes to be the truth. <laughs> so you never know. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, there, there are people that are making off too, like fat cats too. I mean, the upper, right. upper, upper, upper tier earners are Agreed. they haven't felt uh they haven't felt anything at all they're actually making money so it's i don't know how it works I'm not an economist right. there's always going to be some lion out in the jungle that's stronger than the other and is going to get right. more fresh kill and 
but the but the restaurants yeah. i don't know how i don't know how these restaurant owners come back i mean that's like oh, unbelievable yeah. oh I filed a lot of bankruptcies for restaurants lately. Oh, oh, we got to pray for those people. Pray for those people. You must be extremely busy. Yeah. My, well, my joke is, thank God nobody pays their bills, but that's oh. just oh. Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. So who would like to pick it up? If. I can do it if you can hear me. Yes, Berta. Seven. Seven. If, however... There is a needy person among you, one of your kin in any of your settlements in the land that the eternal your God is giving you. Do not harden your heart and shut your hand against your needy kin. Rather, you must open your hand and lend whatever is sufficient to meet the need. Mm -hmm. Beware lest you harbor the base thought. The seventh year, the year of remission is approaching so that you mean and give nothing to your needy kin who will cry out to the eternal against you and you will incur guilt. Give readily and have no regrets when you do so, for in return, the eternal your God will bless you in all your efforts and in all your undertakings, for there will never cease to be needy ones in your land, which is why I command you, open your hand to the poor and needy kin in your land. If a fellow Hebrew man or woman is sold to you, he shall serve you six years. And in the seventh year, you shall set him free. When you set him free, do not let him go empty-handed. Furnish him out of the flock, threshing floor and vat, with which the eternal your God has blessed you. Bear in mind that you were slaves in the land of Egypt. And the eternal your God redeemed you. Therefore, I enjoin this commandment upon you today. But should he say to you, I do not want to leave you, for he loves you and is happy with you, you shall take an awl and put it through his ear into the door, and he shall become your slave in perpetuity. Do the same with your female slave. When you do set either one free, do not feel aggrieved, for in the six years you have been given double the service of a hired worker. Moreover, the eternal your God will bless you in all you do. You shall consecrate to the eternal your God all male firstlings that are born in your herd and in your flock. You must not work your firstling ox or shear your firstling sheep. You and your household will, will eat it annually. You and your household shall eat it annually before the eternal your God in the place that the eternal will choose. But if it has a defect, lameness or blindness, any serious defect, you shall not sacrifice it to the eternal your God. Eat it in your settlement, seeing pure among you, no less than the pure, just like the gazelle and the deer. Only you must not partake of its blood. You shall pour it out on the ground like water. Can we pause here for a second? Um, so we started this one at number seven, right? And number seven was really interesting. It was like, there is a need if there is a needy person, and then there are, there always will be a needy person, right? It's um, there's a balance here. It's always like, but there will be no needy. <laughs> there will never. Okay, so it says on number eleven below. For there will never cease to be needy ones in your land. But that's why I command you, open your hand to the poor and needy in, in the kin in your land. So that's such a great commandment. I just like that one. What, what I like, because that's all about the fairness again. And that's what I love. If really we all were like that, we would have a wonderful world. Really, think about it. If everybody did what that just said, we'd have a wonderful world. It was a natural thing for human beings to be like so kind, God wouldn't have had to tell them to do it. <laughs> true, <laughs> Cynthia. Very true. That's exactly true. That is exactly true. <laughs> oh, wow. That's exactly true. That's why we talk about honor your father and mother. It's easy for a kid to love their parents, but it's not as easy to honor. That's true. Ah, it's, a yeah. different, it's a different thing. Yeah. I think Dr. Mike is in the waiting room. Is Dr. Yeah. Mike? Dr. Mike. Okay, by the way, guys, I tried <laughs> like you wouldn't believe to get in, and I, I just couldn't do it. Oh. Uh, it's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's an old expression that says the length of a minute depends on what side of the bathroom door you're standing. <laughs> <laughs> 
we're rounding it up. Cynthia, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Um, uh, 16? Yes. yes. Uh, observe the month of Abib and offer a Passover sacrifice to the eternal your God. But it was in the month of Abib at night that the eternal your God freed you from Egypt. You shall slaughter the Passover sacrifice for the eternal your God from the flock and the herd in a place where the eternal will choose to establish the divine name. You shall not eat anything leavened with it. For seven days thereafter, you shall eat unleavened bread, bread of distress. For you departed from the land of Egypt hurriedly, so that you may remember the day of your departure from the land of Egypt as long as you live. For seven days, no leaven shall be found with you in all your territory, and none of the flesh of what you slaughter on the evening of the first day shall be left until morning. You are not permitted to slaughter the Passover sacrifice in any of the settlements that the eternal your God is giving you, but at the place where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name. There alone shall you slaughter the Passover sacrifice in the evening at sundown, the time of day when you departed from Egypt. You shall cook and eat it at the place that the eternal your God will choose, and in the morning you may start back on your journey home. After eating unleavened bread six days, you shall hold a solemn gathering for the eternal your God. On the seventh day, you shall do no work. You shall count off seven days. Start to count the seven days when the sickle is first put to the standing grain. Then you shall observe the Feast of Weeks for the eternal your God, offering your free will contribution according as the eternal your God has blessed you. You shall rejoice before the eternal your God with your son and daughter, your male and female slave, the family of the Levite in your communities, and the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow in your midst, at the place where the eternal your God will choose to establish the divine name. Bear in mind that you are slaves in Egypt and take care to obey these laws. After the in gathering from your threshing floor in your vat, you shall hold the Feast of Booths for seven days. You shall rejoice in your festival with the son and daughter, your male and female slave, the family of the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow in your communities. You shall hold a festival for the eternal your God seven days in the place that the eternal will choose. For the eternal your God will bless all your crops and all your undertakings, and you shall have nothing but joy. Three times a year, on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, on the Feast of Weeks, and on the Feast of Booths, all your meals shall appear before the Eternal, your God, in the place that God will choose. They shall not appear before the Eternal empty-handed, but each with his own gift, according to the blessing that the Eternal, your God, has bestowed upon you. So, obviously, all these holidays that we celebrate many of them they were we hadn't even entered really the promised land yet and they were already ordained am i right but we already had left like in other words like for example the passover we had already left so well yeah but they already established the like the feast of weeks and all that yeah. stuff well, we were, that's, we, were we had already this. received the torah but you right. know what I don't understand? They were slaves in Egypt. Now they had slaves. Where did they get these slaves? This is what I'm beginning to wonder. Well, they were given a lot when they left Egypt. Well, they were uh, given it. They Egypt. stole it. I don't know. Because yeah, I often were, wondered they, how they made a golden calf. Where the heck did all these slaves have all this gold to make a calf? Thank you. That I can explain. That I do know. Okay. Yeah. All of these people, when they they did have jewelry with them, okay, and what they did is they melted it down. I mean, they did talk about that, that they all came with all of their belongings, and many of them did have different metals with them, and they did were able to meddle. That I do know, that each person had, you know, possessions with them when they came out of Egypt. They had lots of stuff. They didn't just come with their body. They had, they had lots of stuff with them, so... That's how they did it. They had the they had the jewelry, and plus we had the guidelines where, like it said, if somebody a Hebrew or whatever that you works for you six years, but on the seventh year you have to let them go. So hmm. it's kind of not like um, it's not like a life of slavery. It's supposed to be like a temporary. 
you know, almost like when uh, when Jacob went to Laban. You know, he he want you know he got provided something in exchange for being right. like a servant. He wanted something, so he gave something in return for it. Well, the, the but I, I don't think the slavery that it doesn't sound like the way we were supposed to have servants was the way that we were in Egypt. Okay, I come back. It sounds like it was a more humane way of treating people, that I will say. Okay, so number one, uh, uh, the slaves that we're talking about were in fact Jewish slaves. Uh, You know, there were other nations, then whenever they conquered somebody, they would take uh, the men uh, as slaves. Uh, Okay, we never did that. So the slaves that we're talking about are really um, uh, Israelite slaves. Okay, so let, let, let me start with that. Second thing is, back in those days, uh, in the Jewish tradition, if you had slaves, the slaves actually lived in your house. They actually lived with you. They had families. So it is not a question that, uh, you know, you maltreated these people. Uh, And there are a number of instances in the Bible. This is not in the Torah, but, you know, you have to go into the uh, uh, Chronicles. There were many times when, uh, as Gary said, after X number of years, you gave your slaves the opportunity to become free men. And in the book, and in, particularly uh, in um, um, <coughs> First Kings, Second Kings, um, and some of the other ones, not, not in the Torah, because, you know, the Torah only talks about during the time that we were in the desert. Slave families were asked if they wanted to leave, and they said no. Okay. But my, my question beyond that one is... Why does God allow slavery? Even in the mild form, why does God allow slavery? I would, I would just conjecture. This is just a thought. And uh, because I know, it was, well, if we go back first to the last time we had slaves, and in this country, unfortunately, African-American people were enslaved. And um, in... In fact, what I read was when they ended slavery at that time period, middle of the 19th century, 1850s, that kind of thing, it was the first time that we, the, the, the whole world ever thought about outlawing slavery. And so mm-hmm. I, I, I would imagine that it was the, the institution of slavery got so bad that it was like, we've got to just end this. And, and if you've ever read... Um, Booker is, is it Booker T. Washington up from slavery? It he he yes. was a slave as a child, and he talks about the greatest gift he got on Christmas morning, and you wouldn't believe what that was. I don't know if you've ever read the book. I'll, I don't I don't think I'm spoiling it for anybody. It was a drop of molasses that he put on a plate, and he was just he talks all about watching that little drop drop down on the plate so he could get it. Oh my gosh, it's just in- incredible. But anyway, but going back to uh, Dr. Mike for a second, I'm thinking of people like homeless people or stuff like people that need other people on occasions in their life. They might not need help all the time, but in a period of their life, they might need help. They might need to be attached to somebody so that they can get through a period. So that, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that that might be a, a case where it's like, hey, this person's not going to be able to make it. Bring him into the household. He'll work. She'll work. Whatever. Hopefully, you can, you know, treat him fairly. Obviously, we all tr- need to treat people fairly. It's well, just that's a the thought. Other thing too. You say like, like an indentured servant. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. kind of like you know. It's not just like it's, it's there again. It's like it's quid pro quo. I mean, I do this. You know, I'll work for you and do this. I need a roof over my head and I need to eat. Yeah. You know, and there again, it's like you know, if we follow the rules and we observe the Shemitah, then it's only a temporary thing. And in some cases, it could be voluntary. And we still do have slavery in terrible ways that, you know. Uh, you know, we could have had a rule saying, thou shalt have 
no slaves. Remember, you were slaves in Egypt. Right, I hear you. Yeah, yeah but we still had slaves. But the way you treat other people, the way uh -huh. the way you treat the foreigner, it comes up. It's be, remember we were slaves ourselves in the land of Egypt. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Good night, everybody. That was awesome, Gary. Thank you so Good much. Good night. Thank you. Cool.